Thank you, Mr. President. Well, I would like to thank Mr. Samaras for entertaining us this morning with his grand vision of Europe, which I have to say I thought was particularly ironic, given that Greece, more than any other country, has suffered at the hands of grand abstract visions that are not rooted in reality. Because in Greece, the federalist dream has become the nightmare of the Greek people. Because many people in this chamber and, and elsewhere dreamt of the common currency, the ultimate symbol of European statehood. But of course, they weren't honest about the costs that would have to be expended should a crisis occur. And the people of Greece are paying the price of those mistakes. You told us this morning, uh, Prime Minister, that it was time to enjoy the fruits of the union, you said. Well, perhaps the three million people unemployed in your country might think that those fruits are perhaps turning a little bit sour today. Now, of course, mistakes do happen, and uh, to be fair, you acknowledge them in your speech. What is important is that we learn the lessons from those mistakes. In France, President Hollande is now beginning to realise just how disastrous socialism can be. He's almost, not quite, almost embracing capitalism. I understand he's even now calling himself a social democrat rather than a socialist. I'm not quite sure what the difference is, but apparently it makes a big difference in France. But of course, his credibility is now shot as he does a 180 degree U-turn. In fact, being called a social democrat is one of the more politest things that he's been called in recent days, but never mind. Uh, in the EU, I fear we are not willing to learn the lessons of the Euro crisis. And if we don't learn them, then of course, as the claim goes, we are destined to repeat them. I was interested in an article recently drafted by uh, Jochen Bittner, the political editor of Die Zeit, who warned of the EU's supernova moment. And if we had a cosmonaut in this chamber, as I think we did until fairly recently, he would tell you that a star reaches its greatest destiny just before it explodes. In his article, Mr. Bittner rightly concludes that the best way to prevent this is to activate the reverse thruster for certain parts of the unification project as a way to reduce the continent's political stress. That is the direction the EU needs to go in now. It needs to listen to people from across the EU that are now calling for major change. Failure to take action now will risk the chances of the EU itself going supernova. But thankfully there are now, I'm pleased to say, increasing number of those of us who are talking about and acting on the way that the EU needs to change. Let me quote from you a recent article. Some others want to change things, acting against the tide of the Brussels elite. These are the modern, the courageous, the defenders of a realist Europe. David Cameron is one of them. Now that wasn't written by some uh, Eurosceptic British Conservative MP. I'm sorry that Mr. Dahl has departed because it was actually written by Rashida Dati, a member of the EPP, a member of his party. Prime Minister, that is the agenda that I would like to have seen your presidency advance. Your country is best placed to sound the alarm bells for the EU, to warn of the costs of grand abstract plans and to suggest a looser, freer Europe. Unfortunately, you have chosen business as usual. So let me raise a couple of points that are included in your dossier for the Greek presidency. Firstly, the banking union has been mentioned, the single resolution mechanism. We think that the agreement reached by the Council on the ESRM is a fairly innovative way to protect Eurozone banks and, of course, much more importantly, to protect taxpayers from across the Eurozone and non-Eurozone countries. This Parliament, in my view, would be ill-advised to hold this deal to ransom just because some elements are intergovernmental in nature. We need to put what works before grand abstract concepts. With the SRM, the Council has come up with an agreement that works and that we should support. Secondly, I look forward to the publication next week of the 2030 Climate and Energy Package. From what I read, if it's, uh, if it's true, instead of legislation on shale, shale gas exploitation, we will merely see guidelines, which is what we should be doing. We should be exploiting this resource for the future of Europe. Prime Minister, just as uh, Bill Clinton once said that the era of big government is over, today the era of the big EU is now over. And if we can drop the abstract visions, lose the dogma, focus on a better, more practical Europe, then we will be able to tell the Greek people that the, their hard-fought lessons have not been in vain. I wish you well in the months ahead, Prime Minister. I truly hope that the Greek presidency will remind Europe and the world that Greece is a nation of great people, has a great heritage, and with the right reforms at home and in the EU, a great future. 
If I would also just be permitted for 30 seconds, uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to go back on the comments made by Mr. Swoboda about the so-called populist statements, as he referred to, of, uh, of David Cameron. Um, I thought this might come up, actually, so I brought along a newspaper headline for Mr. Swoboda. Miliband, stop cheap foreign workers. Now, I accept most of you have probably never heard of Mr. Miliband, but he's the leader of the Labour Party, a member of Mr. Swoboda's own party. So before you start accusing Mr. Swap, Mr. Cameron, perhaps you should look a little bit closer to home with your populist statements. Thank you, Mr. President.